New Rolex Air King 126,900. Two weeks ago, during Watches and Wonders, Rolex released its new collection for 2022, something you hardly have missed. I imagined, as usual, the crown split its launches between two highlights and some evolutions on existing models. All in all, typical Rolex way to do things, with a rather conservative evolution of the collection rather than something entirely new. This year, however, I personally found the crown to be a bit more creative than usual, relatively speaking, of course. A Distro GMT on one side, and a revamp of the most controversial model on the other. Today, we'll be looking closely at the new Rolex Air King 126900, a watch that remains sort of an exception within the collection, a watch that retains its overall look, but a watch that has changed more than you might think at first, even more than the Explorer. The Rolex Air King tends to be overlooked and less considered than models such as the Submariner, the GMT Master, or the Datejust, one of the brand's most long-lasting collections. The Air King was launched in 1945 and intended as an entry-level model, following multiple Air watches produced by Rolex during WW2 for pilots. Measuring 34 in diameter, it was rather large back in the days, hence the king in the name but also was a fairly simple time-only watch. Several early references will be made. 4,925, 4,499, or 6,652. But it's mostly the subsequent reference 5,500, a watch launched in 1,957 and produced for more than 30 years that will give the watch its popularity. A 30-form oyster case, an automatic caliber 1,520, or 1,530, a classic look with a clean dial, baton markers, and no-nonsense design, the Rolex Air King 5500 is often considered the little brother to the slightly larger and even more instrumental Explorer 1016. Over the entire course of its long career, the Air King 5500 has known multiple evolutions but overall remained the same simple value proposition Rolex Oyster watch. Next to the time-only model, Rolex launched in 1958 a date model under the reference 5700. At the end of the 1980s, Rolex updated the Air King with a new case, a new movement, and mostly a new dial design. The reference 14000 indeed came for some versions, with 369 applied markers and stick markers between them. Other dials, more classic with only baton markers, were available. Updates concern the arrival of the Caliber 3000 and Sapphire Crystals, but the 30-form diameter remained. The reference 14,010 added an engine turn bezel for a more luxurious look. In 2000, these watches will receive a mechanical update with the Caliber 3130. In 2007, Rolex again updated the Air King with the references 114,200 and 114,210. And while the base movement remained the 3,130, it was now chronometer certified. This 30-form entry-level collection will be discontinued in 2014. After a two-year period without an Air King in the collection, Rolex surprised the masses with one of its most daring models to date and quite a drastic change compared to the previous watches. Gone was the entry-level idea. Gone was the discreet look. Gone was the 30-form case. The 2016 Rolex Air King 116,900 was far larger, flashy, and designed like nothing else the brand had ever produced. And here comes what certainly is the most controversial watch Rolex has ever released. The intention was clear. To make a watch that lives up to its name, the a pilot's watch. But the odd, polarizing dial of the 116,900 did come out of the blue. It was actually modeled after the dash instruments found inside the Bloodhound supersonic car with which Rolex partnered. Well, the car didn't break records, and Rolex left the project after a while. But the design of the dial stayed, and made the now Fordham Air King quite a special watch in the brand's portfolio. The 116,900 is loosely based on the Milgauss, with the same Fordham case, the same movement, and the same blue paramagnetic parachrome hairspring. Because pilots need anti-magnetic watches, the dial not only features a glossy black base with applied 369 numerals and a big triangle at 12 o'clock, but also Mercedes hands, a green lollipop seconds hand, a yellow coronet logo, and large Arabic numerals every five minutes. Really, 
This couldn't be more polarizing. Somehow, looking at the current Rolex collection, we had the feeling that the Air King was due an update. It was one of the last watches with the 30 Wunks movement, and since the brand had nothing to do anymore with Bloodhound SSC, the whole concept was not really relevant anymore.